hello good morning families are you all doing so today's bible reading is still in the book of john wow so yesterday we we studied john chapter 16 and we read the old chapter so verse 33 was what struck me most i don't know about you i don't know if you've read it so if you have not read it you can read it or you can watch the video i did yesterday and watch it and then read along with me so i love when we have to interact like talk about it so if you have any anywhere that strikes your mind strikes your mind here please let me know in the comment section you can also private chat me so here today is going to be about chapter four we kind of take a look behind so it's going to be on chapter four so hello brother john we're about to read your book the book God asks you to write down for us. So let's read. The headline says, Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more, blah, 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 baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea, and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had he had he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples, asked, his disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Do you get a lesson from here? Uh, blacks do not associate with the white, or uh, how do I put it? Oh, I'm in, I'm in middle school. I don't associate with the elementary school students. You know, I'm just trying to look for good examples. I don't know if those are good ones. But anyway, you are somewhere and you, as a child of God, you notice that, okay, let me use a good example. Let's say your mom, hmm? like my late mom, anyway, God's so good, she's not this type that loves to keep malice. Even if he fights with you, she will keep grudges. She will greet you the next day. If you like, answer. If you like, don't. She will tell you, well, I've greeted her. If she doesn't answer, then that's a sin. And I have to clarify myself. I have to greet her. So maybe you're, you have a mom who is having grudges with somebody. And the mom wants you to join her in this act. Like... And when you greet that person, because your mom is not greeting the person, you go ahead and greet that person, you're going to get in trouble. So let's use that as a good example right here. She said to Jesus, she said, Jews, she said, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritan, Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who is who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I, will, I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming, coming here to draw water. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. 
the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is your is not your husband hmm. what you have said what you have just said is quite true that's the woman answering jesus sir the woman said i can see that you are a prophet our ancestors worship on this mountain but you jews claim that the place where we must worship is in jerusalem woman jesus replied believe me the ta a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on the mountains nor in jerusalem i made mention of this yesterday a time is coming where we will no longer go to church we will only worship god in spirit and in truth because god is a spirit your god lives here worship him more here okay all those issues that go on in the church churches nowadays very soon there will be no church okay a lot of issues are going on in the churches many people even carry battles away from church where battle should be solved so let's read on i hope i didn't miss where i was uh blah 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 blah, blah. oh blah 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 blah, blah. I did visit a samaritan that's why i love to note my verse mm. you samaritans worship where we do not know okay woman replied believe me a time is coming okay woman jesus replied believe me a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on the mountain nor in jerusalem you samaritans worship what you do not know we worship what we do know for salvation is from the jews yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the father in the spirit and in truth for they are the kind of worshipers the father seeks those who worship in spirit and in truth you don't allow your flesh to take over your your body to take over your 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 mind you don't listen to your flesh you don't listen to the demands of your flesh we all know where we are going wrong i know mine and i'm sure you know yours too so this is in case you want to note that verse that's verse 23 god is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth i just said that now Okay, so in 25, verse 25, the woman said, I know that I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Wow. The disciples rejoined Jesus. Why did they not finish that place? We need to know the reaction of that woman because I will have gone, really, Jesus, please send me. I will have just explained all my problems instantly. Then they didn't tell us why did that woman have five husbands and even the sixth one that she's living with is not us. What's going on? I thought they said woman cannot have more than one husband. Why was she jumping from one husband to another? Is it a problem or the man's problem? Why is it that the Bible did not tell us some things that we need to know? Anyway, we tend to find out. If you know more about this story, please share with us. So, um, the disciples rejoined Jesus. That's another heading, uh, headline, but we are still under chapter 4. Just then, his disciples returned and were, surpri and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Let's move on. Oh my God, I'm so far. Then, leaving her, leaving her water jar, the woman... The woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made made their way towards me towards him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Hey, that's the food of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is feeding him food. Okay, let's move on. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him, the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you know that this thing I'm doing is a ministry? I am not a pastor. I am just like you are. But something in me keeps telling me, do this. And I've been getting this message since 2020, year 2023 years ago. So if there's something God has been asking you to do, that should be your food. 
seek and run after it and look for every means as i'm talking to you now i have my child on the bed and he will soon cry maybe that's where i will stop the video so it is not that it's all that simple too okay so do your ministry ministry is a food hear it spiritual life is a food eat it let it be hungry be more hungry with that than the physical food let's move on my food said jesus is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work don't you have a saying don't you have a saying it's still four months until harvest harvest i tell you open your eyes and look at the field they they are ripe for harvest I'm telling you also, as I'm telling myself, open your eyes and look at the field. They are all ripe for harvest. Go ye there and get them. Go get them. Social media is powerful now. Everyone is using it for blah, 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 blah. Yes, I blah too. But why blabbing? Why, why blind everything there? Remember to make sure it glorifies the name of the Lord. If I want to type a comment, I'm always very, very conscious of what I'm typing. I don't want anything to portray me otherwise, contrary to my faith. So this is what we have to look out for. Remember that the word of God said, whatever we are doing, the glory of God has to appear. The grace of God, like, um, was it two days ago I did a video about, is it Colossians that talk about uh, Colossians or Galatians? I forget too. But it talks about let whatever you do, let it be seasoned with salt. Your conversation must be seasoned with salt, which means you know where you oversalt the food or you undersalt the food, you know what comes out of it. Undersalt the food will be tasteless. Oversalt, you may not even be able to eat it at all. All messed up. Unless you accurately sort your food, then you can enjoy your food. Exactly. That's the same thing with our conversation. It has to be seasoned with salt, which means it must be accurate. It must carry the grace of God. It must not hurt the other person. It must not destroy the person. Look at me talking. Sometimes when I yell at my kids and I say, don't let me tell you what I used to say. Oh God, forgive us for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, um, okay. Jesus said, they are ripe for harvest. Look at the feed. They are all ripe for harvest. That means go, go there and win souls for Christ. Even now, the one who reaps, who reaps, draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus saying, thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. You see, some people died for Bible, right? Some people suffered just so you know what happened to all the disciples of Jesus in those days, thousands of years ago. So now we, that we are here carrying Bible freely, okay? We are here now, I'm carrying Bible. I could go outside with my Bible. Nobody's going to attack me. But there are places where you cannot do that freely. You will be attacked or even... So that's it. So as it is now, this is free oh. Free oh, give it out free. Enjoy it now because a time is coming. The way things are going, people are beginning to attack the Bible, saying it was written by a man. Yes, written by a man. The book you studied in school, the book you picked from your library, they are all written by men. And you read them, you study them, you write the answer, you memorize them, you put them down, and you pass your exams to become educated today. So why are you against the Bible? God ministered inspired people to write it so it is the word of god because god honors his word more than anything so the word of in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so this is god you have god when you have a bible read it okay and stop attacking bible okay anyway shall all i know is that a time is coming when probably because they're already saying, hey, Bible is written by men. I don't even believe in Bible. A lot of people are saying it's even Christians. Yes, a lot of them that are confused. I call them confused fellows. They say it. Those, whether, they are, whether you're a Christian or not, and you are against the Bible, you are a confused fellow. I'm sorry to say you're confused. You need to know what you're doing. You need to understand this is the word of God. Okay? 
you can't go against it. It's the word of God. But we need to read it now and digest. So that later when they attack it and take all these books away. Who knows? Maybe they will burn them off one day. They will ask you to come and submit your Bible. But at least whatever you have in there will stay still. Mm? That is why the, the word says, those who worship him will soon be worshiping him in truth, in spirit and in truth. No more mountains, no more whatever. But right here, you worship him right here. He talks to us right here. So let's continue. Many These are other headlines. Many Samaritans believe. Many of the Samaritans, I mean, I'm on verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town uh, believed in him because of the woman's testimony. That is why they said, uh, uh, we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So which means we have to testify. When God does something good to you, for you, testify so that your testimony can help others strengthen other people's faith or encourage others not to give up keep moving keep believing in god so our testimony goes a long way many of the samaritans from that town believed okay because they hear the woman's testimony he told me everything i ever did so, but do not forget a lot of prophets are now doing this because they want to appear like god's people many of them are uh what do you call it uh wolves in chief's clothing they will pretend they will they, they have things they do to to be seeing vision so they will see everything and tell you everything nowadays you can no longer believe this the fact that jesus did this that was then nowadays many pastors are doing it and most of them are false prophets so be careful be careful that is why we need personal relationship with god by ourselves so that you could see something at least if they say our young ones we dream dreams and our i mean our old ones we dream dreams and our young ones we see vision so which means at this age of mine i should be seeing vision and i dream now i may see the dream at least i will manage it i'm still dreaming so i'm not completely lost because when there is no vision people perish okay so if you don't even know what to see Please, even if you're not seeing vision, at least see dreams, okay? So relationship with him will make us to see dreams. Sometimes we don't even see the dream at all. Maybe because we are distracted. Because God is never silent. So let's continue. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that it, this man really is the savior of the world. Another headlines. Jesus is an official son. Mm, let's see. After the two after the two days he left for Galilee, now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Mm. So which means if you're doing something in your country like I'm doing this now, people, some people that know me, they just what is she saying? They just ignore. But I have people, you know, who do not know me at all, who appreciate whatever blab I blab here. They like it. Okay? So, mine is that it is not actually about the preacher. It is all about the messenger. Yeah? The conveyor of the message. But just the word. I've heard a lot of people tell me, oh, why are you still believing in MFM? And they say a lot. But you know what? You know what? I have a lot of friends who are attacking MFM right now. But it is not just about MFM. I am not about church. I am about the message. Once the message ministers to me, I don't care who tells me the message. I care about the message. That message, as long as it's raw and it's filled with the word of God, I am perfectly fine. Leave the rest to the, whoever is saying it. I don't care. If a person is like, if a person like let him be a false prophet, it's none of my business. As long as his message blesses my life, I am so, so fine. So let's continue. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans, the Galileans, yes, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem and at the Passover festival. For they also had been there. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. Of course, they rushed him. Now, ah, that was a wonderful thing. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick in, at uh, Capanon. 
when this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people are signs and uh, unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on his way, on the way, his servant met him with the news that his, his boy was living. When he, when he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Mm. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. Did you have fun? I did. I don't know about you. I enjoyed this, okay? Thank you for sticking with me till 21 minutes, 5 seconds. Wow, thank you. I can't believe this is such a long chapter, but I love it. John chapter 4 is so sweet. So much to learn. Did you learn something? I love you all. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, we are, or oh, we're again, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, on, or TikTok. We also have our uh, Twitter, Twitter account. I just reactivated it back because it was dormant. I just brought it back in line or online a uh, few days ago so i'm going to put up all our videos on it so thank you so much everyone i appreciate your sticking out with me thank you thank you for helping to watch this i hope you share the message you can also cut a little part of this message and use it as your short videos or you put it on your stories status anything God bless you, love you all, and bye for now. I see you all again tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.